This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Hey y'all, I'm April. And I'm Caroline. And this is your bloody happy hour. Caroline, are you ready for this? This is your newest guilty pleasure. It's the bloodiest part of your week. Did we say something about it also being happy hour? Show sure did. Because we're about to be sipping on some murder. Bloody happy hour. Hey y'all, this is April. And this is Caroline. Turn Up Tuesday. Turn Up Tuesday. It is all about some news right now. Quickie, what is in the news? What is in the news? Yes, there's a whole lot. There's a lot. There's some recaps from the previous. You want to give us the recaps first? You know, as soon as I told y'all about the Tennessee couple, it was basically a couple days later, they found them. And we were both wrong. We both guessed horrible things. And it was the simplest explanation. What was it? They were lost in the Alaskan they had wilderness. Their, they didn't Only update two their two miles. They didn't update the Google Maps. I I guess not. Three sixty was not locating them. They were only two miles off like from where they were parked. And they were I think they were missing for like I don't know, well, five days total maybe. Did they just w- go the wrong path and they didn't go the same way back? Or we don't know. We don't know. Listen, I don't hike. I, or I especially don't hike trails. I don't know. I'll go and do Cameron Park trails. But I mean, surely they had a map. I don't know. Those. I don't know. Maybe they were just winging it. Maybe they, wanted to, okay. maybe they wanted to live off the land. They, they were they searching couldn't. for the mushrooms. And they couldn't. So they were found. Another hiker found them. And so now they're, they were disoriented. So I guess happy ending, but I do have to shout out to their friend. I think one of her good friends ended up speaking like a day or two later and she shout out the podcast. No, oh. <laughs> no, they'll, now they'll listen to our podcast and they'll be pissed at us because <laughs> we well, accuse them of some shit, but we told them don't judge us for that. Um, But this friend was, she was like, I'm not going to give dirty details, but they were on again, off again. I don't think any, there was any foul play. They have to be lost. Like she just, she was not going to point a finger at anybody, which don't let one of my friends go missing because I'm just going to be like, "Mm -mm. Mm -mm. so-and-so did it and -and so-and-so did it (laughs) (laughs) or they're guilty. (laughs) Um, And then the... Antonio Armstrong Jr. trial is officially over with. So think back to the spring, I believe. We covered in a quickie the story about the former NFL football player and his wife were shot in their sleep, in their bed, in their condo in Houston. And their son, 16-year-old son at the time, was arrested for it. Um... There was a lot of question whether he did it or not because there was another sketchy son, stepson, that was, people thought he might have done it. And then um, information came out that 
that Antonio, the daddy Antonio, was part of a prostitution ring, him and his partner, and within months of each other, they both were dead. So Antonio got killed, mm. and then the partner got killed by a hit and run, and they never found the person that hit them, that hit him. So they're both dead. Their gym was broken into. So anyways, there was three trials or four. The first two were mistrials. They were hung jury. They could not come to a conclusion. And this DA was adamant to get this little boy, Antonio Armstrong, who's not a little boy anymore, yeah. convicted. And so they were, they've were. they been in trial for a couple of weeks. Jury deliberated and found guilty, and he's sentenced for the rest of his life in prison. Um, there's already an appeal and so it's like, man, people are, there's an uproar a little bit in Houston because there's a lot of people who think, don't think that he did it um, and think that this DA lady was just trying to save her job because you take this to trial three times and it's hung, um, you're going to lose your position as a district attorney. Uh -huh. So there's that. I don't know where to go with it. I don't know. I don't know. That was one of the ones that I go back and forth. Kids kill their parents all the time. Um, I don't know if he did it. I don't know either. I, I mean, I feel like he did, but I don't know who else. So that's why I'm just yeah. going with him. <laughs> it's the logical thing. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. There's really no uh, good evidence that kind of points to anybody else besides, you know, their their gym got broken into, their computers got stolen, they were involved in this prostitution ring, like they were involved in some sketchy stuff. I'm telling stuff. you, prostitution so ring. maybe somebody else could have done it. But it's never good. It never ends well. Yeah, no. It never really ends well. Especially when everybody thought you were a deacon at your church. Even worse. Yeah. You know, it's always the deacons. It's or always the, the church. Yeah. Not every church, but, you know. It just seems to happen a lot, and it's just so unsettling. What you got? Well, I got a multiple things. Let's see. We got an Idaho 4 Coburger update, um, and it's very... They did this whole, they did a, a bunch of motions the other day, and then they had all these different dates scheduled out for the September 1st, September 8th, September 15th, have all the witnesses ready, have all this ready, have all this ready. And I mean, the trial was going to start in October. And so they had a motion hearing or a status hearing, I think, whatever, it was um, a couple days ago. And the defense and Koberger finally waived the right to a speedy trial, uh -huh. meaning they obviously need more time to prepare. Like there's yes. no way anybody thought that this trial was going to happen this soon. Um, and so that this basically tax on at least six more months. It's so, I mean, it probably won't happen until the end of middle of uh, 2024 into 2024, maybe 2025 is what I've heard from some other lawyers. Mm. So he's, um, Let's see, on September 1st, I don't know what day this comes out, um, they are supposed, oh, and Ann Taylor, the defense attorney for Koberger, has requested a motion for no cameras in the courtroom. No, Taylor, don't do it. This will but be here's my the first trial I'll ever watch, hopefully. The issue is... We have this court TV guy doing this camera, and they've told them in the beginning, don't just focus it on Koberger. When somebody, like, just have it, just just have it focus on either who's talking, if there's, like, some witness talking, the judge talking. You don't just always zoom in on him. Yeah. And then they would zoom in on him. So they're ruining it for us. Uh, yeah. So we're just... <sighs> Hopefully we can stay up. It's Idaho, and they get they get real. Um, well, they had they had Gwyneth Paltrow's on, and that was I was that you that was Utah. Well, like Utah and Idaho are basically the same. <laughs> they basically, basically. morphed. So that's that's really just the latest uh, on the Coburger. So we're gonna have to wait and just wait and wait and wait. Enough waiting. 
Um, then we have an update on old Sarah Boone, suitcase killer. She's supposed to have her trial like in February, I'm but so it's over. already what August. So she has gone through, I think f- she's on her sixth attorney. <laughs> um, and now this attorney has, um, submitted a letter to the judge that he wants to withdraw from being, her, which he's already said this. He does not want to be her attorney. And now he's officially wrote him the judge a letter filing or citing irreconcilable differences. It's like they're divorcing. And he said that the defendant will not be satisfied with any attorney unless said attorney does not have a caseload and can dedicate his or her time solely to Miss Boone's case. Wow. And he's like, I, he said, I think the best possible solution is to have the defendant represent herself. Yes. I because about no that. attorney can satisfy her. And apparently she, he, she calls him and he doesn't answer. And he only, she only has one of his two phone numbers. And I mean, I'm sure she bugs the shit out of him. Oh, I would hate it. Would and hate he's it. like, well, I'm currently, I'm like working on, I'm in a murder trial right now, which you you have to obviously give I, I don't know his side we only know what she's been telling us so it's like are you really not answering her phone calls are you really just ignoring her or is she just like but i mean you're this is number six so yeah, it so seems she's the common denominator it's she, you sarah it's you sarah it's you you're the problem <laughs> it's you like Look, man, if you're just going to continue writing these letters and being crazy and just represent yourself, just re- do it. Just yeah. pull a Daryl Brooks and just do it for us. Yeah. That'd be a good show. It, the, the, the trial is still currently scheduled for October 2nd. Oh, that was supposed to be. Well, I mean, I know. Yeah, I know. We're, we're about to be real busy in October. Oh, gosh. But um, she's and she's being held without bond. I'm sure this will change if she, who knows. So currently it has not been rescheduled. I haven't heard anything from the judge. So Uh, there's that one. uh, uh, uh. Um, Let me, uh, where do you want to go? BTK or Rachel Morin? We'll end with BTK. Okay, let's end with BTK. Uh, Rachel Morin. This is last week who um, I called her Tiffany and... I was talking about she was this, uh, she was murdered on a trail Mm -hmm. out in Washington, Maryland, Bel Bel Air, Maryland. So 37 year old mother of five, this girl, Rachel Morin. um, She had kids the ages of eight to 18, three different dads. They are, kids are all with the dads now. Uh, August 1st, her boyfriend, Richard Tobin had, announced on Facebook that they were in a relationship. And then on August 5th, he reported she was missing around midnight. So this guy, her boyfriend, Richard. Wait, when she, when did he put it on Facebook? He put on Facebook they were in a relationship August 1st. Okay, so it lasted four days. And then, yeah, and then she went missing and four days later. <laughs> Now, a word from our sponsors. All right, if you love smoothies or if you love your protein in the morning, you need to get you a Blend Jets. You can do that if you go into blendjet.com. If you enter the code BHH12, you get a discount. And let me tell you, these things are portable. They are easy to use. They can fit in your cup holder. You can have it at home or you can have it in your office like I do. Right this morning, I had my blueberry banana one Mm, with some chia seed. Wasn't chunky or anything? It was very smooth. When I have it in my shaker, it is a little chunky. So this is a great alternative. I love it. Um, it is battery powered, so all you have to do is plug it in every two weeks, and the battery never runs down. Oh my gosh, I love battery powered things. Go to Blendjets and order you a Blendjet and get a discount. Thanks, April, for sharing.
He has a history of two arrests for criminal second degree assault, malicious destruction of property, drug possessions, and violating a restraining order. He also oh. has 20 previously filed or 20 charges previously filed against him in Maryland, also including resisting arrest, disorderly intoxication. He also then he's been going on this guy's been going on Facebook Sounds and he'll incredible. make he'll make like all these um oh posts and then he'll delete the post and then he'll make a post and delete a post. So one of the posts he made was um I love Rachel. I would never do anything to her. Let the family and I grieve. Yes, I have a past, but I also have 15 months clean and I and have changed as a person. Please. What's he clean of? I guess drugs. Oh, but we don't know what kind. Yeah, he just said I'm just in, in 15 months clean, but y- you're not changed. But I'm not. I'm letting you. He's suppo- he's still in the clear at this point. So he's been cooperating with police. He's turned over his phone. He's given DNA. But um, Rachel was a frequent. Uh, she went. She did a lot of tanning. Oh, frequent yeah. tanning I remember those pictures. and um the people at the tanning salon apparently she would go daily oh it's good great for your skin and they obviously if she's there every day the people know her you know and so they said that she has was on multiple dating sites but maybe she just got in the relationship and she was just still on these dating sites i don't know so she was spotted on this trail around 6 30 6 Six thirty to seven thirty PM, um, and that was what on August fifth. Okay, so these these people see her, and it's either like a, three guys and two girls and a dog. Okay, these are the people that saw her, and they then this one guy he says he calls and he says that they actually found her body. Okay, this wait, where are we again? At a park in a trail? We are on the Mon Pod Trail in Bel Air, Maryland. Okay. And she, so she, all of a sudden she's missing and then people are looking for her. And then around 6.30, 7.30, somebody, there are witnesses, they say they might have seen her. And then this random guy named Michael Grab, Grabinski, Grabinski, whatever. He says he is a search and rescue specialist who has never walked the trail before and that he and his stepdaughter searched for only an hour after people have been searching for a few days. They searched for an hour, but he felt compelled to check the drainage tunnels. And he had a vision of tunnels. Oh. And now this guy, you would look at him and you would judge him. He got a few missing teeth. Mm. You know, it sounded a little sketch. He does. It looks maybe like he lives in a tent. In the drainage tunnel. <laughs> I think that might be his tunnel. So he said he noticed some disturbances on the trail. And so that's where he looked. And he said that his stepdaughter found the body. He said Cecilia was the first person to see the body. She was hyperventilating. Really, and he's given this interview to somebody. He is interviewing. He has not told this to police. The news people are there and he's telling this to the news people. First. First. She was hyperventilating really, really bad. And then police told her to sit down. When she sat down, she realized she was sitting in a pool of blood. Oh. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> are you hot? Like, you're just, how do you not, you just, are, she was just sitting in this blood pool. She had no idea. Okay. Um, and they said that she was the, that Rachel was laying on her back. She was fully naked. She had brutal trauma and it looked like her head had been smashed in with a rock. There was oh. tw- a 15 to 20 foot blood trail. So it looked like she'd been beaten and dragged Drag. into that position. And they said it looks like the killer was trying to erase her identity and the right side of her face was gone. The injuries were so horrific that there won't be a cast, an open casket at the funeral. These are all quotes. This Um, is what this guy, this Michael Griskinski with missing teeth who lives in the tunnel. This is his interview. And they're like, and so then police finally talked to them. They're like, could you not? Could t- tell us these things. Yeah. Don't go interview. Don't, you're giving away so much information about this case. So then people are believing them. They're not believing, but they found the body and that's what the body looks like. And 
then there was this it's somehow it's connected to this guy who was on this ring video who like from six months ago so apparently they're looking for this random guy who did a home invasion they have a, a ring video of like the side profile of his face and the back of his head and for him like walking out of the door random guy I, they don't even know his name so the bo the boyfriend is not i mean i'm sure everybody's a suspect mm -hmm. but he's still like not arrested working with the, or like being actively investigated yeah yeah and he's still um cooperating he's still cooperating with them um, so we have these and they haven't found anybody, but the police said, I think it was an interview yesterday. They were, they're like, we have to find this. Whoever did this, this person will kill again. So it's not safe out there. I don't know. It seems real personal. I know. But then, okay. If she's, I, it could be that you got to look at her cause she's very, Bang. very made up. Mm -hmm. She has like really big lip fillers and she just, and she has, real like fake boobs and she's like a good looking she's wearing her little lulu clothes out there on that trail so and she's pretty petite blonde hair um i mean anybody could have been following her if they knew if she went and ran daily or mm -hmm. they could have gotten her schedule so somebody could have been following her stalking her and attacked her i don't know how i guess people couldn't tell what if they did drag her from that tunnel so this tunnel, it's like a big tunnel that you can like ride your bike through. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, when I heard tunnel, I was thinking like one of those swampy tunnels. They have a bunch of those like out Cameron Park. And so you run through them, you can ride your bike through them and it gets really dark. But people usually just go in and like graffiti them. Yeah. They're like through, I mean, there's, you go through them in a lot of the races. So I can see how for a minute you go in there, you can't see much around you, but you come out and... 10 seconds but yeah. somebody was must have been waiting in there for somebody her. had been waiting so that's what we know now and we'll keep an eye on it but look at all these potential suspects three baby daddies who could all very well have a motive mm -hmm. and if she was actively dating so they v are gonna have to dig into her love life and was she like t talking to somebody and then they found out she was Rejection. in a relationship on facebook from that guy that posted about it and then got real mad and then the guy that found him found her real like, sketch that's sketchy R real this guy he had ponytail he had giant rings on all of his fingers real skinny guy yeah. so i don't know this is there's got to be more that obviously there's got to be more that we don't know which one would make the most sense it's always this simplest. i mean i know it's the so boyfriend. i go with the boyfriend yeah yeah or he hired somebody to do it but i mean i don't Hmm. Unless one of the it could have been baby daddy. Yeah, I'd like to know what kind but of a lot parenting of the, there yeah. was going on. Co parenting. <sighs> well, yep. Um Is that loud? I have a Michael Orr update. Okay. Okay. So here is maybe a little bit of the Okay, let's just start from here. Michael filed a petition in probate court, okay? He claimed that he was tricked into signing the document making the Tuies his conservatives. Do we does this the part you said or not? Okay. So I'm going to go over that real fast. So he says that yeah, made the Tuies his uh, conservators and not his adoptive family. They gave him legal authority to make business deals in his name, like you said. Um but he complains that he never received any payments from the blind side, right? So he says that he was lied to by the Tuies. They enriched themselves at his expense and blah, blah, blah. The Tuies have denied this. Um, and they said that he was well aware of the nature of the legal relationship, that it was a conservatorship and that it was, was not an adoption as he was 18 and they split the money five ways, mm -hmm. like between all the m members of the family. So in 2011 is when he wrote his first book. Mm -hmm. And in this book, he wrote that he had entered into a conservatorship mm. and he didn't really care because it meant that he knew he was part of their family. Here is the quote. 
Since I was already over the age of 18 and considered an adult by the state of Tennessee, Sean and Leanne would be named my legal conservators. They explained to me it pretty much means the exact same thing as adoptive parents, but that the laws were just written in a different way that took my age into account. Honestly, I didn't care what it was called. My mother was going to be at the hearing to agree that she supported the decision to have the Tuies listed as my next of kin and legal conservators. And that's exactly what the Tui said, like when they came out. So, Verbatim. yes. So it sounds like that this is driven, like he's he's at a crossroad in his life. He's 37. He no longer plays football. And apparently in his newly released book, mm-hmm. he's written that he struggled with his job and his career and his depression so maybe this is some kind of petition. Uh, it's more like of a publicity campaign for his book, for his new book, and maybe he even wants to conjure up some kind of Netflix documentary, like maybe like to enrich himself or enrich his brand. And then the Tui's attorney came out with a statement. Mm-hmm. So this statement is. Quote, the notion that a couple worth hundreds of millions would connive to withhold a few thousand dollars in profit participation payments from anyone, let alone from someone they loved as a son, defies belief. In reality, the Tuies opened their home to Mr. Orr, offering him structure, support, and most of all, unconditional love. They've consistently treated him like a son and one of their three children. His response was to threaten them, including saying that he would plant a negative story about them in the press until they paid him $15 million. The evidence documented in profit participation checks and studio accounting statements is clear. Over the years, the Tuies gave Mr. Orr an equal cut of every penny received from the blind side, even recently when Mr. Orr started to threaten them about what he would do unless They paid him an eight-figure windfall and as part of that shakedown effort, refused to cash the small profit checks the Tuies gave to him. They still deposited Mr. Orr's equal share into a trust account they set up for him. Mm. And that's what I said. There were 220 220 million. What are they going to like fight over pennies on the dollar over that? So it seems like... Is some money Either grab. he needs some money or he's really having some mental issues or it's a little bit of both. But I did say all this came out when his book deal yes. was coming. Announcing you his always book. know that speaking the truth. Yeah, that's exactly right. But it's just hard to like, I always just want to know which one. And then is he when he regrets it, because he probably will, if they were as genuine like everybody thought they were this whole time. Yeah. Is he going to publicly re- like apologize because once you drag somebody's name through the mud for no reason you can't take that back no unless you man up and publicly apologize i wonder like did they still have a relationship or were they just not talk like did he just go i to read the- they've been estranged for the last decade but i want like he, why did he i, I don't know I, I haven't read the book but i don't know why he or why what caused the estrangement? I don't know. So we took we took in a, a kid in high school that was going through a bad situation, and mom was out of the picture and lived with us for about a year or so. And then, and then when he went back with his mom, he still always came and stayed and spent holidays with us. And we would do like beginning of the year like school clothes stuff and I even helped him like get stuff ready before he went to college. He got a scholarship and went and played, play, whatever. Once he got like on his feet, it's not that he wasn't, well, I, I don't know that he wasn't um, appreciative of that. I think he didn't want to be reminded of how needy he was back then. And how he need like that was the lowest of his life, and so he would have just rather just Avoided, ignore, yeah, yeah, like just go and start a new life. Like that was old. Let me start my new life in my new place where I'm independent now. So I wondered if after this movie came out, 
he was exposed for not exposed, but like he was portrayed how he was portrayed. Well, <clears throat> your mom, like your life, the poor, you know, the poverty you came from. It took this rich white family to get you where you needed to be. White so savior, it, white savior complex. It took you where you needed to be, and then, and so then, did it take his? Um, hard work out of it and so he just wanted to be disassociated from that so I want to be Michael Orr by myself and not Michael Orr associated with the twoies because does that make me lesser than if I'm always paired with them because if you're always paired with them they're gonna look at you like maybe slow Michael Orr from the blind side which I didn't see him as slow but I don't know you just never know how people I know, that's Take so things. sad. Uh, but if they were given out of the kindness of their heart, which it seems like they were, then you don't give to receive back. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or like to receive that glory for it. So it's probably just hurting them that he's dragging their name through the mud. But they're, I bet they're not shocked. Like I bet he has shown them things throughout right. their relationship. Yeah. That they're probably not totally shocked from this. I cannot. That's too bad. Well, moving on to BTK. Yes. Y'all. So I had got done working out the other day and I'll pop up on my phone, old tweet from dad, news daddy Brian Enton. <laughs> and it says, I'm on the phone with Carrie Rawson. This is BTK's daughter. She tells me she has flown to o- she was flown to Oklahoma in June to help investigators in Osage okay. o- Osage County. Uh, Carrie also visited her dad, BTK, in prison for a total of three hours in June and July to try to get information from him. And I see that tweet and I was like, "What? Mm-hmm. What is even happening?" And apparently they were investigating his property. And so his property is owned by the county or or whatever. It's owned by the city or something. And so they went and I guess they contacted the daughter to say, hey, we're going to start digging. I don't know. But they started digging, looking for remains of missing people from Oklahoma. The Oklahoma authorities are in Kansas. Yeah, they were in Kansas looking for ties. And so they um, they ended up searching and they found items of interest. They did find pantyhose. Where? And they where they dug. Just un- at BTK's house. At his house. Is where, old house. Old house. They knocked it down. It's just the, a it's, lot. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. Yep. 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 There, they said that they found, um, and they said that items of interest were recovered and they're going to put them through an exam to see if it's relevant to these certain investigations, which they are looking into. And they said the people who they are looking into the cases are Cynthia Dawn, Cynthia Dawn Kinney from Pahuska. And I think there's another one, but I'm going to play you this um, interview that Carrie, his daughter, had with Ashley Banfield. Okay. uh, uh, From News Nation. Okay. Okay. Volunteered to do something that I can't imagine was very easy for you. After 18 years of not seeing your father, you sat face to face with him. Tell me about it. Um, Well, starting in January, my dad was releasing news to another outlet about Cynthia Kenny after Osage investigators were going and visiting him. Um, what was happening was that Osage was going in pretty cold, not with much information. And then my father was turning around, making phone calls to people after they left, like basically building a case, like for why he could be involved in the kidnapping and disappearance of Cynthia Kinney. So this information then was coming out through another outlet. And so I I had been on record for months saying, no, it was just the 10, you know, just like all experts would have told you until maybe yesterday that it was just the 10. Then um, in June, you know, we found out about Shauna Garber. She, she was found murdered in um, um, southwest Missouri um, in 1990. And, and, and that one actually really more fits his MO with the bondage, um, the way her body was found and the way she was dubbed. 
So then I really was just wondering what was going on. And uh, I reached out to McDonald County, Missouri, and they quickly got me over to Osage County, Oklahoma, and, and flew me in within days. And then, like, I, I literally met with my Osage team, and then the next morning um, I was meeting my dad in prison. <clears throat> I can't imagine so, that, that first um, moment when you were face to face. I guess a two prong question. What was it like for you? And did he say anything to you of value? Listen oh, goodness, Ashley. Um, at first, like we just had a reunion. I, I mean, I hadn't seen him in 18 years. He hadn't seen me. We had been cut off for two years. It, it had been letters all that time before that. So it, it took him a minute to process who I was. He's lost like seven inches and he's in a wheelchair. He's pretty much rotting like to his core. And so he didn't even necessarily recognize me. So we, we had to have a family reunion. Um, and then I just basically laid it out that I was there with Osage investigators. And at that time with the Fountain County, that my team literally was in a, in a holding room and that we were there to talk about serious things. And it was the first time he ever dropped his mask and became BTK in front of me. <gasps> uh -uh. So did he tell you anything of value or did he stonewall you like he's been stonewalling investigators? Oh, he was running me down rabbit holes. And then when I went back about a month later, he was running me down, down about 500 rabbit holes where you can't get him to focus. Or, you know, I, I, I asked him, like, do you, if, if use your intellect here and tell us what you think happened to Shauna Garber, you know, apply that and say, put yourself in somebody's shoes. And he came up with these theories and things, but then he, he gave me an alibi. And I'm li literally believing him, even though I know he's a pathological liar. And then I go meet out with my team and they're like, he just lied to you. And I was like, prove it to me. And they pulled up a calendar and proved it to me. And then I was like, okay, he's yours taking like frying because he's literally sitting there lying to his daughter that he hadn't seen in 18 years. They have given him this immunity deal that pertains to this tri-state area where they believe um, at least these two women and maybe more could be. Is there, is there anything that can actually entice your father to give up any goods? W would an immunity deal do anything given he's in prison for for life anyway? Well, the, the idea is that if he would take immunity, like it would spare my family from having to go through possible grand juries and trials as like witnesses, his extended family. Um, it would spare the community. Um, my dad basically said maybe he would like to go out like a Roman candle. Um, it's important to understand though that it's not my dad pushing these. He's very um, unhappy with what's going on. It's the investigators doing the, the hard everyday work of investigating that or, or pushing these cases. And we're coming up against a man that's playing lots of games. My father does not want to be put in a van and woken up in Oklahoma in a holding cell for you know the kidnapping of Cynthia Kinney. He wants to live his life out at the prison that he's at. So that's one pressing point that if he's not gonna cooperate, then we're gonna do this the legit hard way and he's gonna wake up some morning somewhere he doesn't want to be. Can you, I can't believe that she's never, that, that she never seen, it was just, she's just been writing him letters. I didn't know that. I wonder why. I probably, she just couldn't face it. I mean, I, I don't know. I think, oh, I don't know. I, I mean, you still go see my daddy. I mean, I, mean, I look, go see him. Well, you probably would, but like, if you think like, you, you find out all the stuff he did all the murders and how he did it and how disgusting he was and how he was wearing all their clothes and posing with them and taking the pic and just like, and that's your dad. Like you, that's not the guy. That's not who, you know, that's not so maybe, so it's maybe like, you don't want to even know, You don't want to know that guy. So yeah. you just write letters and I don't, um, that's, yeah, you just made a good point. So you write letters because she didn't want to see the real BTK. Yeah. And that's what she got. And then yeah. when she said that, that was the first time I saw BTK. Did you just he, become the FBI? I did. This was, you just, that was your application. <sighs> <laughs> I mean, uh, what she was like, and then the BT mask came down or whatever. What do you think his reasoning is behind like taking people down these rabbit holes? First of all, it's not like him to have not confessed to these. Mm -hmm. He loved, loved it. He gloated and told like details and details about every single person. So why would he n omit these p couple of people? So, but I guess she said in the interview that he had started to call because he's doing his playing his cat and mouse games again. Uh -huh. So, so but is why he would it take so relevant right now? 
with Koberger getting all the okay. So, so but would he have relevant? And so kept those yes in the back of his in like his back pocket because he's like okay here and then okay. Wh- but when did he get ar- sentenced? When did that all happen? He well, well, I guess it was eighteen years ago. She she said she hadn't. Uh huh. Sometimes they'll withhold some just to always have something to like bargain with yeah or just to not be irrelevant because once you they know everything and they don't need you anymore all the book deals are done like you're just sitting there rotting in a cell so maybe he just had them in his back pocket for when he needed to become relevant again and with with Koberger and all that coming out and she's he's connected to what's her face uh Catherine Ramsland who was the who wrote the book about BTK and spent all this time with him, probably had a baby with him or something. She was like obsessed with him. So Yeah. So either that. And so he probably found out about that and was like, Oh, or he's lying just to be relevant for a period of time. Right. So either he did it and he's lying. Okay. So either he did it and didn't tell them so that they can come back and he be, he can be relevant again, but he's, Telling all these tales so that it can last longer. Because if he just confessed the first day you go in, they're going to be done. Yeah. You know, it'll be over with real quick. Yeah, they won't need him. Holes, now they what? need him. Daughter may come back again. And, you know, daughter may come back again and somebody else may come back again. So maybe he's just liking the attention that he hadn't has not gotten well, in a long time. Well, because now he's once again has is having control over something. Yeah. It's so weird how that you can just still have this power from being, and you're just, oh, so creepy. He is the worst of the. He is the worst. I mean, I think he's worse than Ted Bundy. Uh, but I now already forgot how. Oh yeah, he's gross. Um, I already forgot how they said they tied os- the, these people to him. I don't know. They didn't say. Like what? Made I them think even that check. from what. From what she said, he, he had been call. He had started calling mm. and and doing his kind because he used to do that with the media and he would send letters to the newspaper or That's to the right. news anchors and have his little signature BTK. And so, unless he just like you said, he wanted to become relevant again, so he started making calls to the outlets saying that there was this and there was oh something's hidden here. You should go. Maybe you need to go dig over here. You might find something. And then maybe that's when they brought the daughter in and they're like, hey, go talk to him. He's he's making these threats or whatever to the news station, whatever. The question would be, would he have tides to that area or would they have tides to Park City or Wichita or wherever he was? Like, how could have they how could they have crossed paths? Who the, they got to make that who? connection. Oh, BTK these the, and the, the victims. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sure they have. I don't, I, I didn't, I didn't look into that part. Um, well, yeah, I'm, I don't expect you to know, but I'm just wondering how this is going to all. Unless they're just about. people who have been missing in that area for a while. And they, it's just, they're just cold cases and they're reopening cold cases. Yeah, but you just don't tie them to a serial killer unless they have ties to that area. Like, you know that they would have been in the Wichita area at the time BTK was killing. Mm-hmm. Or unless you figured out that BTK would have been in the area where they were at the time of their death. I need a, there's a, uh, in, Brian Anton did, it's like a 10 minute interview with one of the sheriffs and he kind of goes into detail about these things. I need to put that somewhere. Gosh. Goodness, goodness, goodness. BTK found a way to be back in the news. I cannot believe it, but it's, it's in, in kind a wheelchair? of. What happened? I don't know. He pro- I mean, he probably got graped so many times, I guess. I don't know. Their health just deteriorates in there. I mean, how old is he now? I don't even know. And and if you don't Can know who he is, him. he's Dennis Rader, BTK. Bind, torture, kill. Go back to episode... Caroline did a two-part episode on that one. Y'all, it's a good one. You need to go listen to it. Go back, go back, go back. Okay. He was born in 1945. Oh, hell, he's about... 20, 23, 
1945. He's 78. Oh, he's got a little bit of time. He's got some time. He's Maybe not in jail. I can't believe he didn't even like. He didn't. He never wanted to kill himself. He, he well, he just wanted to be no, alive. No, he again. was waiting for this right here. You know how patient they are. Maybe he was. Captain he Ramsey was one of the contact him. That's what he wants. He wants Captain. Ramsey. He was one of the big uh, patient ones. Like he, because he would go wait in closets. And dormant. Like, remember yes. when he when he went dormant for like 20 years or f- or f- may, maybe like 10 or y- while, while the he kids were young. Yeah. 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 That's a different level of. Uh, d- yes. Yes. Woo. Good stuff. All the news. We're just going to count this as your full episode, too. So listen to this twice because I don't have a full episode for Thursday yet. Yet. Maybe I'll spit one out. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. Okay, y'all, um, go and rate us, review us, and subscribe to us. And share this episode with somebody who loves some BTK. Oh. Or loves true crime. Or loves anything. and keep Anything an- in the news. And if you go on a run or a hike and a trail, bring somebody or bring some mace or something. Yeah, I don't know. Don't go anywhere alone. Don't forget to stay aware, stay alive, and always be DTF. Down to find the murderer. Bye, y'all. Bye. For the ones who get it done, the most important part is the one you need now. And the best partner is the one who can deliver. That's why millions of maintenance and repair pros trust Granger, Because we have professional-grade supplies for every industry, even hard-to-find products. And we have same-day pickup and next-day delivery on most orders. But most importantly, we have an unwavering commitment to help keep you up and running. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done.